Hello, and welcome to People's Voice, where true stories touch deep emotions. Today, we delve into, I just found out my wife was cheating for six plus months. Come, let's explore these real life stories. I found out my wife was having an affair for over six months. Finding this out really shocked me. We've been together for 14 years, married for 10, and have two children, six and four. The last thing I ever expected was to find out she was having an affair or cheating on me. Strap in for a long one. It started about a year ago. We became friends with a couple who had similar aged children as us, lived close, and we all got along really well. We started hanging out, watching each other's kids, and going out as a group quite a bit. Over the coming months, my wife and the husband, as they are the primary caregivers to the children while the other wife and I work more hours, started to become closer. They clearly had similar personalities and could just talk and get along. I didn't see a lot of this since it all happened when I was away, and they were doing mutual kid stuff together. I wasn't too worried about it, though. I trusted my wife. I never had any reason to doubt her. She always had guy friends throughout our whole relationship. Through the early spring, there were ups and downs for us. She became aware she was somewhat depressed and started going to counseling. She started working out and eventually began losing weight. Shortly after starting counseling, she asked me to go to couples counseling. I thought things were fine, and I kind of said, I think we're okay, let's see how it goes, and left it at that. She never brought up couples counseling again, and she kept acting like things were good with us. We were still sexually active. Our sex life throughout our marriage was never a sore spot, but probably not as active as one would like. We never went more than a month without sex, and rarely more than a week, but I always knew she wanted sex more than me. I had insight into this and found myself asking, why don't I have any sex drive? Will this ever get better? In and around this time, I found two vibrators she bought without telling me. She was clearly hiding them, but they went off overnight one night. She woke up that night too. The next day we talked, and my point was just to say, why didn't you just talk to me about it? Turns out, I was probably depressed too, with work and everything going on. We moved five years ago to her hometown, where she had some friends, but not as close anymore, and I had no friends. I have a good job, as I'm a physician, and I make good money, but we also spend a lot of money, so I was constantly worried about finances, and that's on me. Throughout her counseling and working out, the four of us started hanging out more. It felt great, like, oh, we finally have friends, and I was just happy about it. We started having sex more often, and everything felt pretty good. In June, we went on a family trip. In July, during the trip, my wife told me the other wife discovered her and the husband's text thread on his phone, and it greatly upset her. She told me it was a large quantity, but nothing inappropriate. There was one time I said, I love you, as a joke, but it's all just friendly, she said. She kind of offered to show me the texts, but in a, you don't want to see the text, do you? Kind of way. I had no reason not to trust her at this point, and I was like, Nah, that's cool. You have guy friends, no big deal. When we got back, I started getting anxious. I don't know why, but I just started to feel insecure. I noticed the sex toy pouch was moving around. The two of them were spending more time together. He had a week off work for the holiday with the kids on summer vacation, and I was working all the time to make up for the trip. As I got more anxious, the text kept coming up, and it turned into, You can't look at the texts. That's an invasion of my privacy. She bought him a present a week before my birthday, one she had to put together with iron-on patches, and then it arrived. When I was home, I could feel it, the package, and she gave it to him the next day while I was at work. But then I saw it the day after. My point again, why didn't you just tell me about it? I felt like I was going crazy. Why was I so insecure? Why couldn't I trust her? Why was I constantly checking where your friends were and the nest cams in the house? Now, I felt like I was being replaced too, sexually before with the vibrators, and now I felt I was being replaced as a partner too. And I told her as much. I was a mess. She reassured me, they are just friends. Nothing is going on. 
It's just like me and my other guy friend. But my PHQ-9 was at the upper limit of moderate. I wasn't sleeping or eating. So I made an appointment with a psychologist and a PCP and started taking meds. I've been going to the therapist every week since August. Before my next guy trip in July, I talked to the wife, who I work with, but she's not a doctor, about the texts. I started to learn more of the details. There was not just one, I love you, but many. Good night, good morning, almost every day, pet names, etc. I was pretty crushed. A week earlier, my wife made out with me in her sleep and said, I love you, and then fell back asleep. I was confused. I asked her, and she said I was pet name. But after I learned the truth, I clearly wasn't. I talked to my wife about these details the next day. She said she was so depressed, so sad, and so upset with how I had been treating her the last few years that she almost left me, and he talked her out of it. I talked to him for a while, too. I told him I was okay with him communicating, but the I love yous and pet names need to stop. They agreed, apologized, and he said he was going to back off, too. A few weeks go by. We are all hanging out, and I arrive first, and she doesn't really give me a hug or anything. Then they arrive, and I just know she is going to hug him ASAP. And she does. I lose my mind. Bad on me, I overreacted for sure. I knew I was doing it, and I just tried to separate myself to cool off. But she comes and is like, what is wrong? And we have a fight about it. I knew I was in the wrong, but she still came to get it out of me. The next day, the other people decide amongst themselves that the best thing for their family was to set a boundary so the male and female from our two families would no longer communicate privately. I didn't love this because I was starting to be good friends with the female, but I agreed, and my wife said it's BS, but she would respect their wishes. A couple more weeks pass, and we are on a family trip, just us. I notice that she has been texting him privately and texting a million other people the whole trip. It's really every time she goes to the bathroom or when I go, she's on her phone. Eventually, I call her out, and I was really furious. So much for boundaries, I said. It was not a good day to have this fight, but it happened, and I meant what I said. I was assured they were no longer communicating privately. Three weeks later, I get a call. She needs to tell me something. The other wife looked at the phone logs, and the two of them, no longer texting, had now been talking for hours a day, 40 minutes at 4 a.m. on his way to work, one and a half hours at night, and 20 to 40 minutes during lunch, every day, always when I was at work. If I leave for overnight at 9, there's a one and a half hour call. If I'm home at night, no call, but a call at 4 a.m., literally every day. I was crushed, betrayed. She lied, directly lied. We started going to couples therapy finally. She assured me and the therapist that they had no more communication. It was over, and she was working to rebuild trust so we as families could be friends again and the kids could have their friends back. Well, a month goes by, and one morning on the Nest Cam, I saw my wife taking a workout selfie, but with a sexual kind of pose. Later that night, I was able to get on her computer and find her photo stream. I discovered they had been nearly sexting, no true nudity, but sensual pictures, sexy poses, underwear pics, and sensual smiles I had never seen before, going back until August. Additionally, there were a ton of inspirational quotes about finding your second love, not being able to be with the one you love due to outside circumstances, and being with someone who loves you for who you are and not what they want you to be. This was crushing to me. I was devastated. I felt so betrayed. She told the counselor they weren't talking. I told the other wife. When my wife and I talked, I found out they were using a secret messaging app since before our trip with the big fight, but I was assured there was nothing physical. How will this time be different? I asked. I can't hurt you again. I can't keep lying to you, she replied. I later discovered that she had told him she wanted to run away with him in five years when the kids are older, or in twenty years if she had to. I was told it was just an escape. 
a fantasy, but nothing physical. Two days later, he spilled the beans to his wife. They had been kissing since August, since before my hug over reaction. They had sex numerous times, at least two to three. It all made sense now. She would go run errands. During nights, she knew the wife would be at work. Either I would be home, or she would hire a sitter, and she would go over there. The first night she went over, I had a bad feeling because she turned, find your friends off and hired a sitter before I got home from work. I asked her the next day and she said, no, I went to my friend's house. See, here's this picture I took with her. But this was definitely the first night she went to his house to sleep with him. She made sure to take a picture as an alibi. My wife still didn't tell me about this. We went to couples therapy, where she explained the pictures and made a point that nothing physical happened. But then, I came out with what I knew. I couldn't hold it in anymore. We cried. I was devastated. She was ashamed. However, the next day, she went to his work to try and talk to him, supposedly to get closure and apologize. He sped away, and she followed for a bit, then turned around and called me. But how can I be sure that's really what she wanted? How do I know she didn't go to see if there was something left between them, and he wasn't just ignoring her because of what his wife made him do? Now she says she's sorry, that she's crushed by what she did too, and can't think of anything else. In the meantime, we had another therapy appointment and we go back tomorrow. We had a long talk about what this means, and I think we both know this is heading for divorce. I don't think I'll ever get past this. I won't be able to trust her again. I can't. Everything I found out was either discovered by someone else or by me. She didn't tell me anything that someone else hadn't already uncovered. Through this whole process, I'm trying to understand what she might be going through, but there's still no transparency. She has changed all her computer, phone, and iPad passwords. The therapist asked if she would share her passwords, and she was like, no, it's my privacy. The therapist responded, Are you kidding me? If you want any chance of this working, you need to be 100% transparent. But she still isn't. I don't want to have to ask for everything. At this point, though, I don't even want to know anymore. Now I'm wondering how to proceed tomorrow and in the future. The legal stuff I can figure out. I've already talked to a lawyer, but the timing is tough. Do I tell her tomorrow? I want to start the process of in-home separation. We have a guest bedroom, so that could work. Do I separate our accounts? Everything is joint right now, but I make the majority of the money, and everything is going to be split 50-50 in the end. Would this just make things more acrimonious? Should I continue to just hold on until our next couple's session in January after the holidays? Update 1. Well, we made it through the holidays. We moved into separate bedrooms, agreed to separate officially, and decided it was okay to see other people if we wanted. Christmas came and went with just a little fight, but overall, it was cordial. The more time we spent together, the more I knew this was the right decision. Eventually, I can heal, but I can't trust her, and I get annoyed by all the little things. New Year's was especially tough, because it marked the 14-year anniversary of our relationship. Although I was with my best friend, it was me and 14 other people, all couples. I should have stayed in town and spent the day with my single friends, but I needed to see my old best friends, who all knew my wife as long as I have. We had one last family vacation last weekend, a museum trip we had promised our son for his birthday, but never got around to doing. It was good for the kids. It was tolerable most of the time, but the more time I spent with her, the more annoyed I got. Little things, like her being on her phone a lot towards the end of the days, really got to me. But I held it together. I knew I had every justification to file for divorce, to spring things on her, and to separate the finances, but I didn't. I talked to my lawyer a lot, kept most of the finances joint, and she hasn't moved any money or anything. I did get involved with someone. It gave me some insight into what it's like to be desired and wanted, and into what both my soon-to-be ex-wife and I were missing from our marriage. It was good, things were fun, 
and that's all I signed up for from the beginning, and she knew that. But then I could tell she was catching feelings, and I tried to let her down gently. But she told me she loved me after just 12 days. Eek. I know. I'm not ready for all that, so things got complicated. I suspect my soon-to-be ex-wife is getting involved with another man, which, I mean, whatever. Now that she's stopped dragging her feet, I don't care as much. But the thing is, he's married too. She knows him through a volunteer thing. She's on the board, and he's the new president. But they're exchanging 500 to 600 texts per day since a day or two after Christmas, that I can see. Since they're SMS, I can't see the content, just the quantity. For example, while we were on our family trip, she sent and received 270 messages from 6 to 8.30 p.m. while we were at dinner and putting the kids to bed, which seems excessive. She went over to his place last night to do some work and was there from like 8 to 11 p.m., which isn't too long, but still. I've noticed a pattern in the timing and frequency of their texts. She's been going to his house other times, too. There are quite a few late-night texts between 11 and 11.30 p.m., and even on New Year's Eve, right at midnight, and later at 1 a.m. I know I need to stop digging for pain, but I can't help but think, can we just stop at blowing up two families? Should I bring this up? We have couples counseling today, mainly to talk about how we're going to proceed with the kids. It'll probably be my last session, but I don't know if I should bring this up or just let it go and address it after the divorce is finalized. I also have some suspicion that she knows about my girl, which makes me think I should just let things be. But she hasn't said anything. My lawyer knows all about both situations, and didn't really say anything one way or the other. I also think she might be back in contact with her AP, but I'm not sure. I found a screenshot of her secret messaging app taken on 1-1. The messages were scrolled up, and I don't know when they were sent, but it was a new picture of him I hadn't seen before, with a longer beard than he had this fall, and his name in the message was set to default, whereas it was his real name in previous screenshots. I haven't seen any other evidence, and I'm going to let this be for now, but it wouldn't surprise me if something is still going on. Final update. She moved out. Well, it's done. She moved out, and tonight is the first night she's not sleeping at the same house as I am. She has the kids, too. It's okay. I found some good friends to hang out with tonight, and I have more friends coming over tomorrow and the next night. It's still sad. I miss the good times. I miss what we had. I look at our wedding photo and see how happy she was and wonder what changed, what went wrong. I'm not sure I'll ever know. I'm going to be okay. The kids will be cared for by both of us. I still love her but realize she has changed and doesn't love me like she used to. My Bubba, I will miss her. I'll never forget her. I'm so sad right now. I was okay but not now. Thank you all for listening. Please like, comment, and share the video if you enjoyed it. Also, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so you will be notified when we upload the next video. Take care.